some business to take care of uh, before we get going. We have an organizational meeting to, uh, to take care of. We have to nominate our chairman of the board tonight. We have a uh, nomination. I'd like to make a motion that uh, Jim Ward become chairman uh, of the Shade Tree Commission for the coming year, and also that Jack Milrek become vice chair. Second. S second. <laughs> Approved. Approved. So, vote, formal uh, vote. Formal vote. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. So. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So we go from here, Steve. We have our chairman and our vice chair. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. And uh, we shall go on from here. January 22nd, 2014, Shade Tree Commission meeting. Uh, first up on the docket is the Villanova train station station improvements. Do we have anyone from uh, the train station improvement with us tonight? Except to it was tabled from uh, last year. Last week? Yeah, last year. Last month, last year. Nobody? Okay. We'll pass on that. Uh, second up, uh, a tabled return is uh, 427 Barclay uh, coming back to us uh, again tonight. If you can come up and uh, state your name and the project, please. Hi, my name is Bob Wager, RKW Engineering. I'm the project engineer uh, on 427 Barclay Road. Okay, fellas. Um, if you can re refresh us on the project again, fellas, the, uh, why it's come back to us and what changes were made. Okay, this uh, basically it's a uh, it's a tear down of the construction of a new single family home. Uh, we were before the uh, Shade Tree Commission previously and uh, they wanted some changes made uh, we have made those changes and uh, we're back here to try and get approval okay we had some questions about the uh, the front walkway I remember with the, the gum tree yes we moved the front walkway away okay. from the gum tree as close as we could to the to the building okay I'll and then the, what was it in the back we had some questions about the uh, was it the proposed uh, Underground electric, the location of that. Yeah, that we uh, I've moved that. It now uh, goes around that a couple of trees to the uh, pole in the back. Okay. And then we moved. The, did you have to move the seepage bed a little bit to get away from that pine tree? Was that our yeah, extent there? Yeah, I, I rotated the seepage bed. There's the uh, original layout, and, and here's the uh, way we rotated it and okay. farther away from those trees. And was there any other items that that we had recommended um, at that time? Increase the radius on the uh, tree protection fence uh, here. Right, we included that spruce and that pine. And uh, yes, we moved. Okay. Yeah, and I changed the, uh, there's a typo in there. It said six trees. That's been changed to two trees to That's be removed. To be trees, right? Yeah. Okay. We have, a, we have a 30 inch oak that's coming out, right? Correct. Yeah, let me put my glasses on. Um, where are we going? The only, we got a 30 inch oak, which is right in the middle of the house. And there's a 30 inch oak right off to the side of the house here. These are the two trees that are coming out. Okay. Now, do we ask for replacements on those two uh, trees coming out, um, being that they're heritage trees at that time? I don't think we discussed that. Discuss it. This would be the appropriate form, Mr. Chairman. Even though they're not over the tree limit since they are heritage trees this commission has the ability to uh, get compensatory request compensatory plantings for those trees just that sometimes when we have our arbor squat to look at the condition of the trees that are coming down he usually would recommend per se maybe not the uh, <clears throat> the total value that they'd be worth but maybe one or two additional trees could be planted as compensatories for that removal of those if they're in 
detail. Correct. And that's what Mr. Hosback does oftentimes. He may note, you know, one or two. So uh, we don't have a report from the arborist on this property. So what I would just uh, suggest or recommend to the commission is um, knowing the size, the one just comes into the uh, category of heritage that perhaps we ask the applicant to uh, uh, at some discretionary number the, the commission has of maybe two or three trees per heritage tree and install them and then they can note them on a revised set of plans that goes to engineering for the final grading permit. Um, would are you, you planning on putting trees in at this point? I mean, is there any plans for from the landscaper? No, there is no landscape plan per se because we we uh, technically we didn't need to put replacement trees in, so we haven't done a landscape plan. Right. Just sometimes when we get into that over the thirty inch or over, it becomes a heritage tree. Right. Would, would you be in agreement to put one or two trees back in for each tree you take down? Yes. Definitely. Yes. Okay. Could that be noted on a revised plan and sent back in? Yes. Uh, yeah, how many, uh, what do you think, two two per tree or? If we could put four back in, board would be in nice. agreement about yep. that? Yeah. I mm -hmm. think that would be great. <coughs> if yeah. it would be possible and then to do that? The, the only thing is that they, they would have to be shade trees. Right. Yes. Yeah, on the, on the list. It couldn't just be like little arboreties or something. Right, yeah. Right. Be, okay. I think you have some room on a property that those couple trees could be put back in. Oh, yeah, I think we have room. room. Okay. Yeah. And could, could I also ask, if I may, Mr. Chair, you know, we've been talking about shade trees and, and street trees, and based on the um, existing plan, you know, perhaps we could request that some of them be along the street to continue the, you know, the tree-lined streets that we, we try right. to champion here in the township. If, if that could be uh, maybe a recommendation that you'd be agreeable to, maybe put two or three of those trees as a, as street trees along Barclay. Okay, Bill. Yes. Would that be possible? Absolutely. Okay. Maybe in yeah. keeping with the neighborhood, whatever the tree line may be. I know there's some sycamores and that kind of thing Two along the street. By the street and one yeah, I, I think there's room for, you know, one there, one there. And then we can spread the other two somewhere on the property. That'd be great. Okay. All right. So we Mr. Mr. Chair, could I ask, uh, so we're on a new year, if we could take a new leaf. Uh, so to make it easier for the recording secretary, specifically since she's not here, I would ask that a, a motion be put forth to accept the plans with uh, revisions of installing four trees, do a quick vote, and then it's all official, and we note that in the minutes. I think that'll make it easier for everybody involved. Okay. We'd uh, like to take a vote here on this plan as we see it now. It's revisions plus uh, four canopy trees to be installed, if uh, we're in agreement with that. Uh, okay. Yep. I make a motion to that. Second. We're good. good. All Everybody good. in favor? Yep. All Aye. Favor. All in favor. Thanks. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Passes Thank four you. zero. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have a uh, two thousand two hundred South Ethan construction basement access. Uh, Steve, can I uh, mention something? We we usually get little cover sheets with these uh, that you know that, that kind of spec out what 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 the changes are going to be and how many trees are going to be removed. And I noticed that wasn't with the uh, with the plans this time. Is there a change on that or no? Uh, I'm sorry. What you what you do have is a standard uh, is our standard agenda, which gives you a a one sentence blurb of what occurs right when we, oftentimes when we have the grading permit application that will be on but a, a plan of this type uh, the applicant really is required to have the table that shows the trees being removed and all and, and going forward uh, as far as the arborist report there is no arborist report on this plan no but I'm saying we, we, we usually get one of those cover sheets on every plan in the past it's like a little sheet thing it talks about, you know, to give some details about the topsoil to be removed, the number of trees to be replaced. Yes. Something about gives you an idea of what the plan is, more than a one sentence thing. And I noticed that, that that used to come with every plan we got. I will make sure that occurs next month. 
I apologize. Because okay. it really you. helps us get a little bit focused in before the meeting and not have to put the applicant through the big song and dance, as much of a song and dance about what they're doing. So it's really helpful. I just wondered why we didn't get them. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Could you let us know uh, your name and the project we're working on here? Hi, I'm Brian Matson from Monmean Associates. Um, the project here is 200 South Ethan Avenue. This is the property that uh, a little while ago sustained some pretty significant fire damage to the property. Uh, currently, the plan that we have here is to, uh, the applicant would like to remove about 750 yards of fill material from underneath the building and keep it on site. The grading on this plan shows that material being added to the property. We've done our best to keep the material on the property while avoiding the as much disturbance to the trees as possible. Um, the plan does not propose to remove any trees. So, so, so this isn't the this isn't actually the reconstruction of the house. This is just some preliminary steps you're taking Correct. to get it ready to. Yes. The house the walls um, are just that. Just the walls. Just the walls. That's okay. it. Everything else is gutted. Real tragedy. Sure. Yep. Well, it's nice the walls are still up though. Gives you could, something to work with. Could you walk us through your proposed uh, project here, just uh, so we can get a feel for you taking the material at, out of the basement? Sure. Yes, out of the basement. Um, pretty much this entire area uh, is basically going to be all. We're adding fill material to that area. We're adding some up to this side of the pool and also some over to this side. Uh, they're adding a new, the one piece of construction they're adding is a new access to the basement, just a couple of steps down to the basement level. Um, eventually, I don't know when they're, what their time frame is. So walk us through it. How much material is coming out of the basement? About 750 yards. Mr. So Matson, I'm, I'm noting on your uh, sheet two of three on the uh, the proposed contours. They seem to go through from, or are very close to. I'm sorry. Uh, the 21 inch cherry, the 15 inch tree. The same thing with your 406 contour goes near a 14 inch cherry. So for the. If you could, for the edification of the board, perhaps if you outline, I mean, we can all see where the contours stop, or perhaps if you outline a little bit, because I think the, the proximity of where your fill ties into existing contours um, comes very close to some trees that will, at a minimum, uh, could endanger the tree and maybe needs to, uh, if you get a sheet three, I, I see you have your tree protection fence up, but uh, I don't know if that's adequate. Are you really squeezing that in there, the tree protection fence right up by the contour? And that's near the fill stockpile, but really continues down along the line. Is, is there a chance to tighten these lines up a bit? There, there's a couple, a couple fingers that are dipping down, you know, down toward a 24-inch spruce. You have a 14-inch cherry. You know, is, is there a chance to tighten these lines up toward the house rather than having them filter all the way down as fingers would be? Yeah, we could look at um, steepening the slopes, uh, keeping them further away from from those trees. I mean, how are you proposed to get the material out of the basement? Good question. No, I'm not exactly sure what their method is. Um, no. It looks like the only way of egress is going to be by that. But it looks from the plan is some steps that lead down to the basement there. It would be on the be on the west side of the house, is it? Near a uh, 
33 inch maple tray. There's a doorway there. I don't know if that's how they're going to go in and out. I would imagine that's where they're going. That's the proposed access. You probably dig down to that level temporarily to be able to get down to the basement level. Question, do they plan to do that with something like a um, backhoe or, or something like that? I assume they're getting something mechanical, right? Right. I guess my question is, can you explain to me how they'll be able to move that around and get the dirt over to the stockpile without having an adverse impact on some of the trees in the area? Uh, there's got to be a kind of a route or something you're going to have to run that thing through, right? Or has that not been identified yet? Yeah. I imagine they'll have to go in between the pool and these trees here. With a backhoe? Can you point that out again, please? Where, you're, where you thought it was going? I would imagine they'll have to come out of the basement and then come, and come okay. through this line here. Is there any first floor at all? I mean, are, you, are they digging up underneath an existing floor, or, or, or is it just open to the sky? It's underneath an existing floor. So it's only partially destroyed, not completely. It's M Mr. Madsen, so I guess it's, it's, it's one of my concerns would be, so you have the access egress from the basement, and not that we want to take down trees, but if the trees are going to be adversely affected by the equipment running over them, mm -hmm. it'd be better to note them as being removed and then providing appropriate compensatory trees as opposed to saving trees, which, you know, later on may die. And the same thing really occurs where you have your, the line that notes your tree protection and your limited disturbance. You know, I, obviously from the plans, we can't tell what the drip line of the tree is, but it comes very close. So, you know, my, my concern again is we show the trees being saved because there's fence there, but you don't know how far these trees hang over. And again, if they're going to be adversely affected, you'd rather note them, and, and not that we ever want to remove trees, we don't have to, but if they need to be removed to address the grading, and then the applicant has to provide the appropriate compensatory trees, I think that'd be a better situation. Or as the chair said, perhaps you look at your grading and, and maybe revise it so that you, you can clearly show that you stay away from uh, all these trees that are on the property. Just in my opinion, I, I, would, I would recommend to have our arborist to go out with the engineer or site contractor to evaluate the exact uh, plan of uh, material being moved out, identify the trees that are being impacted the most, uh, starting with that th 33 inch maple to the west, uh, the trees that we indicated down on the uh, on the south side, Steve, uh, by the pool, below the pool, and seeing if those trees are in fact viable and worth saving, or if they were just going to be impacted so severely that they should just be taken out and then compensatory trees be put back in, or if this whole grade could be swung uh, toward the pool, I think that would be n north. Is that if that's how this is arranged? I don't, I don't see the north arrow on here. If it's yeah, north is straight up. Yeah. There's so, a I mean, wh what are the advantages of, of this? This we're just trying to level this area out, basically, around the pool. Right, and part of the part of the plan. There's an existing sanitary main that runs just below the pool, and there's an easement associated with the line. So all the grading on the plan was avoiding that sanitary easement as well. Because it, from the plan, it looks like the only way that, that they can get the material out is actually by running over that sanitary line as it is right now. Right. Yes, okay. Are they going to keep that pool, do you know? I believe that's the plan, yes. Is that a gas line? <coughs> is that a G? What, what is that hard uh, dashed line that goes right to the uh, basement door there? It's a... Uh, is that the limit of the start of the Steve? What is that? See which one is... There is... Um, that's the... Yellow. I don't know what that is. You see the yellow dash? Yeah, yeah that's right. the limit of the start What's the, the, the hard, the hard line? dashed line? is the new storm drain. There putting an inlet at the bottom of the basement access. 
and then they're bringing a form line out out to grade. Is that new line? That's a new line, yes. Where, where, where is that going to end? Is that end right where we see it there, where the tree protection and the sill fence end? Correct. So it's going to spill right out onto that 25 inch pine, whatever. Yeah, it's just the only area that Inland is collecting is just um, whatever drains down those stairs. In the steps? Th down those steps. Just a second, what you're saying. I, I don't see how we can tell the damage without knowing how the soil is coming out. I mean, it's just not premature to even try to figure out what possible trees could be damaged because the impact of taking all that soil through any any area in there it's, it's going to make a lot of difference what how the soil comes out where you know what you're using to take it out would normally be what we would need something we would need to know uh, to be able to figure out how the compaction of the soil or the compaction of the machines is going to affect the trees so uh, I think it's a little premature don't you uh, what do you have, I don't have my rule with me the, the the southern corner of the pool paver, what is the distance, distance from your fence to that corner? It could it be, it's about 10 feet? Yeah, let's scale with the bottom. That's 120. So it's about 10 feet? About 10 feet. Maybe less than that, huh? Like 8 feet? It's, yeah, 8 or 10 feet. <clears throat> uh, Steve, would it be possible for it to have our arborist meet with their engin engineer on site? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have in my notes uh, arborist to visit the site with engineer, evaluate the trees that along uh, that area you just noted to see if they're viable. And also, no matter what means, however it's excavated, really isn't the issue. It's how do you get it through that little tunnel that you noted. And to see if, A, that's even um, possible because I know they're not going to want to damage the pool pavers and what's the condition of those trees and then we'll have him take a look at the lower line where the limited disturbance and the uh, tree protection fence meet to, to look at all basically skirt the uh, uh, limit of disturbance and evaluate those trees for this commission um, it'd be my, my recommendation to have this done and then come back to us with the full plan of how this whole thing's going to be sequenced out and showing us how far away from those trees you can get. Or if it's not possible, um, some of those trees have to be removed so that you can do what you want to do because they're going to be impacted to a degree that they're probably going to die. And then show your compensatory plantings on top of that. Okay. All right. Um, I was going to ask, um, the ba those stairs that are going down to the basement level, how are they going to be made? Are they going to be poured concrete or what? The stairs will be concrete. Yes. How are you going to get a concrete truck up there? Or is that what the, he's going to go up the driveway? Yeah, that. They're going to just put a ramp down there and then build them after they get there. The steps aren't there yet. I understand that. Um, but they're, they're going to be concrete. Uh, my question is how are you going to get a, you're going to have to concrete trucks going to have to back up the driveway or whatever? Is that right? That's going to be just another large piece of equipment that's going to have an impact. That's the reason I'm asking the question. Let us know next the, time. <laughs> the applicant from Dozer Construction was going to be here tonight, but he's, he's homesick. So. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I'd just like to see a little more detail on that uh, in the sequencing and, uh, and those trees, if our could look at it with their, <coughs> with their construction engineer to get back to us on that, Steve. Yes, sir. We're hey, at, we're Mr. Agreement. Madsen, are, have you submitted for your grading permit yet? Uh, yes, we have. Okay, do you have... It's on the grading, are these the same plans that went in with the grading permit? Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, at one point you might have to show a tire cleaner and some other things, and if you do, it'd be good that this commission gets to see that, where they see access egress. All right. Thank you, sir. Board agreement? Yep. Okay. W agreement to do what? To have them come back uh, with these... Uh, Issues of after our arborist goes out exactly. and it's with the engineer. Okay. Works for me. Very good. And then part of that will be, you know, showing how the soil will come out and Correct. where it's going to go and what the method of taking it. Right. And any heavy machinery, like 
bulldozers right, sure. or yeah. and cement trucks. Exactly. How they're going to be coming in and out. Very good. That's a motion. Right. Until next month. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, next up is a uh, subdivision 344 King of Prussia Road, subdivide into two lots. Do we have anybody here from King of Prussia Road for us tonight? No. All right, next is. Uh, Are you from King of Prussia Road? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hi, gentlemen. I am uh, Matt Lombardi. I'm the owner of the property. The, uh, the plan for the subdivision, the lot is essentially quite wide open, um, with the exception of one tree on the... Uh, what side of the property is it? East side. The east side has one tree that I know is already dead. There's really no branches even on it. Over the years, somebody must have pruned it beyond repair, and that's, that's just dead sitting there. And then these two other trees that sit toward the back. Um, and I think these are actually in pretty rough shape. Someone must have pruned them because I think they slightly lean over the commercial site um, behind it. And that has all, they have all vines running up them, and so those three are to be removed from, the, uh, from this piece of property. Okay, so our total trees coming out, we have three trees coming out. Three trees, yeah. They're, they're not in the footprint, right, of the buildings. They're, they're coming out because of the grading changes, is that right? Or they don't seem to be in the footprint? Yeah, they're not, within the, they're not in the footprint. And they'd fall right behind where the house would be. So they're being removed because of the grading, or um, the this one. Um, let me point it point. This tree right here on the side, as I said, is already dead. It, oh, okay. It doesn't have any branches even on it. It's hard to see here. Okay, that's the 16 inch. Yeah, what is it? Okay. That's already dead. There's really no branches even on it. Okay. Um, so that has to just come down for that reason. These two other ones toward the back of the property, um, they kind of hang over. Someone must have pruned the heck out of these two at some point, I think because they were hanging over this parking lot. Maybe they were nervous it was going to hit a car or something. So there's just kind of uh, the trunks are kind of there, going pretty high. Um, but those two, I think, need to be removed also. Okay, can we get to page four of the proposed four six, sheet four? Can we take a look along that uh, would be the east property line from you and your neighbor? Um, we just want to verify the ownership of those. Uh, there's four trees in question there, starting at Glen Mary, with a significant 31-inch walnut, 19-inch maple, 33-inch walnut, and a 41-inch elm tree. Um, actually, I also purchased this property down the hill. Okay. Um, but yeah, these trees really actually do. They fall right on that lot line, but. Um, this one actually broke through the fence right here, this wide 41 inch. The elm? Yeah, the elm broke through. Nice tree though, but uh, it, I think it actually grew around the fence. It's stuck there now. Um, but yeah, this is the, they're with this property. But you own that whole, you own all three properties, All three right? properties, yeah. Have you talked to yourself about these? Yeah, a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I went back and Are forth Are you okay over with this. it? Yeah, I'm okay with all it. Right. So actually, I guess I misspoke earlier. The uh, this is, this is just a preliminary design, but that one tree would fall, the maple, where the garage would be if, if we did put it in that spot. So that, would that bump our total up to four trees being removed? Which, could you point that maple out? 
Yeah, that's the, this maple uh, right there, right? We're kind of in the corner of the garage. They were all are under 30 inch four? there. Are you four? Right? Yeah, it's still three, right? Yeah, it's still, th still three. Still three. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right, so a couple questions come up. We have uh, <clears throat> on your uh, storm. Yeah, that, that actually would make it. Or is that a 23 inch maple on the picture? I'm sorry. Oh, just on uh, a question about uh, your stormwater management, your bubbler is runs parallel. That pipe's going to run parallel with the house there. You know that? <laughs> The right. pipe that leads to the bubbler. Right. The outlet pipe runs parallel with the side of the house down to the spreader. All right. What's the, dis dif what's the dis distance from the, from the ditch to that 41-inch elm tree? 1 in 20. I'm at like 8 feet. The 41-inch the elm? Yeah. We're at about 10 feet. All right. So we're going to overdig on that ditch by about two feet. So now we're going to be within eight feet. And we still need egress to get past the building to build the building, right? So at eight feet, we're going to be right on top of the root zone of all these significant trees on this side. The 41-inch elm, the 33-inch walnut, the 19-inch maple, and the 31 inch walnut in order to construct the house and then put in our water management system? Um, yeah, I guess I, I understand what you're saying. Um, you're going to be into them pretty hard. Yeah, okay. I don't know, I don't know trees that well. <coughs> Besides, uh, I think they look nice, but I don't oh. know how far the roots come out from there, you know, that'll be affected. The elm tree is almost like a special, uh, even in the shade tree community, the elms are su such a threatened uh, tree, there's very few left. Okay. So a huge elm like that is like a, it's like a treasure. Okay. That is really, really something we try to protect. Any, any existing elms that have not been killed by Dutch elms. Oh, really? Okay. So that, it has like you don't a, see too many plants with a 41 inch elm. It has like a double base. Is that two trees that grew together, or is that one tree that, that just the how it uh, works? A lot of trees split. They have oh, they split at some okay. point in their lifetimes. And, uh, yeah, it's a nice looking tree though. Yeah. Question. Um, you're you're building this thing, right? So. Yeah. Could would it be possible for you to put the uh, the spreader and that piping and so forth in before you build the house? so that you can ap approach that from the other side so that you don't tread over where the roots of those trees are. You understand what I'm getting at? I know it's kind of a crazy thing to build the drainage before you build the building, but... I get, you, I get what you're saying. So you, we would essentially build the, the drainage pit from where the house is going to sit correct. versus the tree side. I mean, I, as long as that makes sense engineering-wise, I think that would be okay. Would that help? Yeah. It would. It's just very difficult. You can't really... It would be hard to dig that ditch and then dig a footer. You would undermine the ditch in it. How? I don't know, I don't know Steve. If, 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 you can't really build it backwards like that. You know, you can't really. Can you? Yeah, I mean, the, you, you've expressed, Mr. Chair, all the different concerns we've had. You know, just having the overdig of the uh, structure, right? Because they don't, they're not going to dig a vertical line exactly where the line shows there. There's got to be some room for the folks that bore the footings and uh, put the concrete walls up and there'll be backfill along there. So you're gonna have all that activity of the backfill. And then when that's all said and done, then you're then, you know, at some point while it's still at rough grade, they're gonna run the uh, it's like the roof leader and the um, the outfall pipe to the bubble up. Right. Um, so in my opinion, I, well, I have some major concerns about the, the uh, these trees are going to be so significantly Im impacted 
as proposed that they might not live through the project. Um, you're going to be you're going to be so you you're going to be so into the root system dam damage wise that over half of the root system is probably going to be 50 60 percent is probably going to imp impacted killed or cut by the the procedure here so um, that that to me is a red flag I, I would I would recommend that our artists would go out just to just to look at the condition of these trees here are they worthwhile healthy and viable how hard uh, how significant is the impact going to be and if it is going to be impacted that great do we uh, recommend compensatory trees be planted if these trees do in fact die as a consequence to the construction process here and I'd um, be fine with that that sounds that sounds reasonable with that said also when we look toward uh, the southern part of the uh, property where the garage proposed garage is um, there's an 11 inch maple uh, that's very close to the piping from a looks like a uh, just a stand box which is going to feed that uh, infiltration bed on the back side of the garage there's an 11 inch maple tree there yeah that's going to be so impacted by all this I, I would probably recommend that for removal but I'd also like the arborist to go out and look at that also uh, to make his recommendation as to number one the condition of the trees existing number two uh, the impact that this as proposed will cause to the root system of the tree and number three if so the impact is going to be uh, the long-term viability of the trees is gone is, is not going to it, it may kill them then compensatory planting would be recommended to uh, ensure that we could account for these if they do die uh, within Steve how, how many years do we have a statute of limitations I mean five I mean, four uh, years uh, oftentimes five and, and and perhaps I, I don't know mr. Madsen you know maybe I mean the the impact of the the basement you know that excavation series but I don't know if it's possible to look at rerouting the pipe so that it goes on the other side of the house I don't know if that would work. I mean, there's Just details you'd have to look itself. at. That, but that may save some of the consternation of this commission with all that excess, with all the uh, the issues that are going on. There would be that much less uh, activity, if you will, over there. And I, I guess I'm looking at where where does any stock? Where's our stockpile? That's my question. Right. Okay. So you have the stockpile on the other property in the sub. Okay. Um, again, I have an odd question. Um, do we ever run things like that actually inside the uh, foundation of the house? Could that pipe be go through the go through in, in the inside of the left side of that pipe? I, I would strongly recommend and urge no, not to do that. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't think the applicant would want to ever do that either. All right, it's just a thought. I'm an electric. Um, if we could at this time come in, into agreement as far as our recommendations here, um, if we could, Steve, have our arborists go out to do a site visit with uh, the engineer and Can the I owner. read them back to you just so I make sure I have them? Yep. Arborists to re review conditions of existing trees, number one. Number two, uh, review impact to root systems of existing trees if they are viable. And third, long-term viability of the trees taking into consideration their existing condition and a report a written report back to this commission well will the ar arborist uh, be clear that, that this lot this line of trees is especially important will they i mean he doesn't have to look at all the trees just that that line i mean uh, just especially that line of trees right there to the west side of the house correct yes sir okay and really and i would highlight on that elm tree we really want to you know that the elm tree can't be replaced i don't believe because i don't we can't we don't even plant elm trees anymore so uh, the other ones can be replaced but the that, that elm tree is irreplaceable so
All right, we're in agreement. And uh, with his recommendations, you can come back to us with the plan, uh, with the revised plan about what, what we do from here out. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I mean hybrid elms they have. But. Okay, we have uh, 613 West Lancaster Avenue, demo existing building, construct new restaurant. David Sanders. I'm with Site Engineering Concepts, and I'm here with Glenn Tompkinson, who's a representative from the uh, owner's office of the property. Um, give you a brief description of uh, the property on Lancaster Avenue. It's on the north side. Uh, this is the existing features plan. There's approximately 1,800 square foot existing building, the bar restaurant that is there, the Causes Corner. Uh, existing on the property, there is a small planting area at the front here with two trees, six inch trees that we plan on removing and a slight grass strip to the rear of the property. Um, what we are proposing is a demo of that building proposing a 2,800 square foot restaurant in a attached to the existing proper uh, buildings to the west and adding in a new entrance to off of Lancaster Avenue and as part of this we are going to continue the existing sidewalk that is in front of the Bertucci's and connect it across in the front and smooth that that pedestrian walkway out and we have shown different landscape areas that we are adding through the site uh, one in front of the building uh, one on each side of the entrance a new landscape island in the center of the parking area uh, and this is kind of a working sketch uh, a little different than the plan you have we have added a landscape island to the rear of the property and in the back corner here we have increased the grass area in the rear with some plantings in that area it's approximately 900 square feet of impervious we're removing on the site and adding plantings throughout um, so that's Thanks brief description of the property and what's uh, what's happening with it. So we have two existing uh, street trees that are coming out? Correct. Okay. Do, do you have those listed uh, species or size on this? Uh, they are, we had them listed as six inch. Uh, they're not, I believe they're maples. Yeah. It's as far as I can see, they're maples. Two, two six inch maples. Yeah. And then uh, per code going back in, uh, the island plantings is, it's a little bit different than, than our normal uh, per view, uh, that's what we have here. This is how you came up with the number of trees that you need to put back in mm -hmm. with yeah. the islands here. Yes. Um, just a question on the selection. You have a as trees going back in canopy trees. Ellie Agnes. Um, is there a reason behind picking that uh, particular plant? Do you know your landscape architect? Uh, There's a landscape specialist at their office and that is what she came up with it's something that they've done on other properties and they think would be a good fit on this property uh, we did go out to do some soils testing for stormwater management and came up with testing that at two to three feet we were hitting rock so it was one of the um, a better plant that she had seen thought would be better for for the site for that this site and the conditions that are out there so we have two uh, two Russian olives going in, and the remainder is uh, we have some cherry laurel, and then some selected shrubbery and that kind of thing around your your far corner buffer area. Yes, and it, as we're, we were working and with the new add, plan, we right, added what, one what, in this area. Another you're going to add another uh, Ellie Agnes that yes. we don't have in our plan. Correct. In, into that island. Yes. Okay. So you. Does everyone follow that, that addition? 
So there's a total of three canopy trees going back in. Two are, two are coming out presently. Two maples, three are going back in. Any other comments? Thoughts? No. Uh, the area directly around the building uh, will have to be redone just for the handicap spaces and the walkways and everything, but the majority of the site will stay at the existing elevation and we'll just maybe coat it and paint it maybe, but the, uh, the striping. The majority of the lot was actually... Oh. Sorry. Uh, a good portion of the lot was repaved recently in order because it was just in disrepair and I believe we had a grading permit for that. So most of it's already been done. The top left corner, um, is that going to be repaved or is that just restriped? Just restriped. All right. Because there are a bunch of trees right along there whose roots would be affected Correct. if you. Correct. The entire, we, the existing edge of paving along the rear will be the same as it is now. It won't be disturbed at all other than Correct. repainting just it. Disturbing of digging up the asphalt to put the, plant, the island in. That would be it. There's, there's no new curb or anything going in? Correct. Okay. That is true right in the very corner, the uh, acute corner, that one. Uh, um, and nothing around there either, right? You're, you're, you're turning it into, is there, is, there, is there a tree there now? I see the one right up there. Yes. Will that affect that? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, yeah, that's up, that's up the berm behind the parking of the Bertucci's, so. Well, we're 34-inch 34 inch 34 tree. Inch. You're going to be removing the parking? Pulling the paving back in that area. Right. Um, as long as it's done carefully, uh, that we don't incur any pulling or damaging of roots when the tobacco does go in there. Um, if they do, they should be cut cleanly. Yes, uh, so not to damage uh, the neighbor's tree um, on that. I'm not sure, does it say what kind of tree it is? It just says 34 inch tree. <clears throat> be, the, be on the east corner, a lot right, right all along the common property line between the three properties there. <clears throat> Yeah, I think if they do incur any roots from those trees, uh, they should be cut cleanly to make way for your new uh, planting area where you propose your uh, Iliagnus in this. What is that going to be for the dumpster or something? Is that what that is for? Or? The, this would just be a parking space. Oh, it's a parking spot? The dumpster will stay on the existing paving behind the building. Okay. Jim, would this fall into the uh, area where we ask that the neighbors be notified of what the plans are and how it might affect their trees? Is there enough significant work going on there to have, have them? Usually if there's a right on the property line, we ask you to, to let the neighbor know what's happening that might be damage to their tree and mm -hmm. kind of get their okay. Is the that owner owns the property to the east that it's located on. Who? So that they own that property to the east also. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> okay, good, okay. So they've been notified. <laughs> but what about the how, is those houses in the back there, right? Those those are those, that property. I mean, where's the property line there? It's the, right. the shading is done within the property line, so that that is the property line. All right, right there. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions? Are we in agreement here of uh, yeah. what the project's going to be? Okay, all in favor? We're fine. Aye. Very good, Pulse. You can proceed from there. Thank you for your time. Next on the agenda is uh, 430 Wild Haven, raise existing house and construct new. us again. William Smith, the builder. <laughs> Bob Wager, the engineer. 
Okay, uh, basically it's another, another tear down. We're uh, removing the existing single family home and putting in a new single family home. Uh, there's only one tree to be removed. Uh, there's very few trees even will be affected within the building area. Uh, in the rear of the lot, there's a lot, there's, it's a very brushy area. There are a few trees here, but we won't be going into that area anyway. So um, it's pretty straightforward. You can see the only tree is this one in the rear of the house uh, that's to be removed. There are no trees anywhere near. This is the basin area here. There are no trees on this property or neighboring properties near that. Uh, the only other trees are on this side and this area in back, which is the brush area that will not be disturbed. Um, the existing driveway is going to be the same. Uh, yeah. Stays the same for yeah. the new house also. I mean, the, the entrance apron anyway. The existing driveway comes up here, and this is the existing house here. This is the existing driveway. The new driveway will go past it, and the, the new house is further to the rear than the existing house. Do you intend to use the, all the existing uh, hookups as they stand, gas, sewer, and uh, water? Yes, the, uh, the gas is good to remain. We're going to use that, that service. Uh, the san sanitary lateral is existing. We're going to reuse that. And uh, existing water, we're going to reuse that. The current the uh, current uh, electric service is overhead. We're going to put it underground. I see that. Right there. This is the existing overhead. Proposed underground. Just as it is, the, the neighbor has a pretty significant oak tree to the, uh, I guess it would be to the, to the west as you come up the driveway. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Um, I know you're going to be staying away from it. Is there a reason that that, that your uh, underground uh, water system is kicked that side of the driveway? Well, one of the main reasons is because we have all these utilities in the front that we have to uh, stay away from. Um, and the, uh, there are no other trees in the area that, uh, that we're going to affect. And that one, we're going to be staying at least uh, approximately 18 to 20 feet away. So, and it also is a low point in the lot, which makes it. Yeah. Would there be any possibility of of putting that tank directly under the driveway, just to get it off of that, away from the actual digging of it? would be impacting the neighbor's oak tree a little bit less? Yeah, I, there's no uh, engineering reason why we couldn't, couldn't move it over a little bit. That would be... Put it, you know, in here. I just want to keep away from some of these uh, utilities because, it, you know, it's, the utility location is basically just a guess. Right. And uh, so, yeah, we could probably move it over in here. I think that would, uh, do you see the neighbor's oak tree there, the yep. 32 inch? I think that would help us with equipment wise, just saving some of the root system of that tree. Um, if it's, you know, if it's a decent tree, you know, of right. the neighbor, that could be shifted a little bit. I guess it would be to, uh, if this is north south, it would be to the east. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't hurt if we could have the arborist look at that. I mean, you know, he's going to be looking at other projects. If it's, if it, you know, if it's not a viable tree. Right. I mean, if, if it's, Steve, if he's going to be going out, can you just take an eyeball on this neighbor's 32-inch oak, eyeball it up as far as its uh, viability. If it is a decent tree, po the possibilities of pushing that tank east underneath the driveway, if it's not, then, uh, you know, it could stay where it is. Yeah, I, I think we could, we could probably come another 10, 15 feet over. That would make a big, uh, that would be a big help for the root system of that tree. 
Yeah, we can. Uh, we'll we'll do that anyway. Actually. All right, yeah. we'll that's fine. That anyway. And uh, all all utilities stay uh, as present without any digging from the street to, to your where, where to, they entered that to where they to where they house. exactly like there'll be no digging within that forty foot uh, you know the, the the front forty feet of the property right. there. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. So the applicant's going to move that. Stormwater management system 10 to 15 feet east, Correct. which will bring that leading edge under the driveway somewhere. Uh, knowing that he's going to do that, do you still wish to have the arborist? I think I think at that point, Steve. Yeah, I think, we're going to move it anyway. I mean, if we, I, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, so I think it's fine. He, the arborist doesn't need to come out if, if that's what they're, if they intend to move that. That that there's no need for an arborist visit. Now, what I would ask is for Mr. Wagger to. Uh, Make sure he submits a revised grading, a revised grading plan to engineering, showing the movement of the system. Okay. Any questions? He doesn't have to come back for any Correct. Own agreement. Agree. Very good. Thanks, fellas. Thank you very much. Thank Okay, next up is uh, Ravenscliff Roundhill, stream bank stabilization pond dredging. Move uh, 2,493 cubic yards of dirt kept on site. Hi, my name is Michael Boker. I'm with Mominy and Associates here to represent uh, the Homeowners Association for Ravenscliff and Roundhill. There's really two parts of the project. One is a stream restoration, and the other is pond dredging. There's four ponds located on the property. Uh, they're looking to dredge two of those currently after they perform the stream restoration. The, I'll show you the overall. Probably familiar with the ponds. Sure. They're located near the intersection of Church and St. David's. Uh, the two ponds they're looking to dredge are to the left of the drive that serves a couple houses on the property off of that road. And the area that we're looking to do the stream work is located uh, about 300 feet upstream of this pond. On the first sheet, there were a couple of pictures to show you the state of the current stream bank. Uh, an attempt was made a couple years ago to try to fix it. Uh, we're going to go back in and actually fix it properly. Uh, this picture is looking just upstream of the area where we're going to do the work. You can see how the boulders are integrated with the bank and have protected that bank. We're going to carry that same methodology down through the section of the stream that, that we're working on. The idea is to save, there's really only three trees in close proximity to where we're working, it is to save those existing trees. I will tell you, however, that one has been undermined a bit and does appear to start to be leaning in. So that tree, which is the 12 inch walnut down towards the end of the project. I'll show you a picture of that. This is looking just downstream of the picture I showed you, turning around, looking downstream. Uh, you can see the remnants of some of the work that they did before. The work, they tried to stabilize it before with basically uh, telephone poles anchored into the bank. Uh, and you can see here, even up here, it's starting to get behind. Uh, the telephone poles and start to undermine and erode the stream bank uh, just at the limits of our uppermost work. Moving further downstream, you can see how the poles have come away from the bank and the bank is being undermined on the outside as it's making this turn through this area. Uh, this tree is also one that's in question. You can see the poles probably used to be about here. So we've lost some of that bank and the roots are starting to get exposed for this one and it's even worse as we get down further. This, this is the tree, I believe it's a 12 inch walnut. 
uh, where the stream bank has really been undercut in that area. Uh, the proposed work will actually move the bank further out from that tree, so I say we're going to try to save it. Uh, we'll, we'll see when, you know, actually start the work. Uh, these pictures were taken recently. It seems like every time I go out there, it's getting a little worse, so. That's the, the stream restoration. Any questions on that before we get into the, the pond dredging? Just uh, on that uh, restoration is uh, proposed boulders and that kind of thing to, to strengthen the bank. Is that what you're going to be putting back in? Yes, really what's happening here is the, the stream bed has become disconnected with a floodplain. Uh, it's been severely incised, so when we do get heavier storm events, uh, the velocities through that channel have been increased over time because the floodwaters can't migrate out further away from the stream channel and dissipate and really connect with the floodplain. So the, the efforts are to connect the stream back with the floodplain. We're actually going to raise the bottom of the stream some. Uh, the work involves putting uh, rock veins, five rock veins, along the stream. So we'll actually, instead of being a straight gradient, there will be a series of, of level areas and then about a six-inch drop as we go down the stream to help reduce the velocity in the stream. Uh, and once we're done, it will actually be a little straighter through the transition as well, so you're not getting that abrupt change, which causes erosion as well. Uh, through the stream bank. So are they, they sort of like little stone dams? Is that what you're building across there? Sort, sort of like little stone check dams, yes. Can I ask the applicant, I know there's other permits you have to get. Where do you stand in that line? Uh, I'm sure DP? Uh, it's actually just the general permit for stream the bank GP? restoration, and we're in the Delaware County Conservation District for that. Okay. And I believe this was submitted, have you submitted for grading permit? I thought I saw this. Yes, these are the plans that we're right. I thought I saw that coming. Okay. Is, is there? Have you made recommendations on repairing buffer as far as replanting anything in the along the sides or anything itself? Or? Uh, vegetation is actually the key to actually getting a good viable stream bank. Uh, there's a couple trees. I think three river birch and one sycamore to go in this area associated with this work, as well as a lot of live stake willows and different grass plantings to augment the. Uh, the stabilization efforts. You actually put some some soil or dirt back where this stuff is eroded, and then you're going to plant stuff there to hold it in place. Is that correct? Yes. So this, the, the bottom will be lifted and will actually cut back a little on the sides or fill back in to create a smooth transition between the new stream bed and the rest of the surrounding areas. So really the reason we're before you tonight is the amount of earth that we're moving around, which is about 2,300 cubic yards associated with dredging these ponds. Uh, if you go out there today, the depths range close to the banks to less than six inches to you know, minimal depths out towards the center of the ponds. Really for the ponds to be viable and promote you know, good health, we need at least four feet in these ponds. So to do that, we need to remove about 2,300 cubic yards from each of the total from these ponds. The idea is once they, they dredge the ponds, we'll take the material up to this area, lay it out, let it dry it out, and then plant grass again. Um, there's really no trees within the area, the open meadow that we propose to do that work. And the material that we take out will be spread out you know, from you know, one to just over two feet deep probably at, at its highest point. And th does that get reused later after it dries out, or it just that's it's just going to become part of the meadow? It'll just be planted, and it'll just turn it into just the meadow. Stays there. Yes, they've actually done this before on this property. Yeah, I remember it was a while ago. So it's, it's going to be the same process over again. How long do they have to do this? Like every twenty-five years? Well, we hope uh, with the efforts that we're going to do upstream, that'll help uh, associate with dredging the ponds. Uh, there's been a lot of deposition just upstream of the uppermost pond. Mm -hmm. Cleaning that out too, and then maybe doing a more regular maintenance on that area alone will prevent them from having to go in and, and do the ponds. 
how are you going to, when you, um, I know at the shore where they dredge stuff, they just pump sand. We would just be, is that what you're going to do here? Or is this going to be done by like backhoes and stuff like uh, that? Either loader, or clam bucket, and then and then trucked up to here and spread out. Are those trees where the two ponds are kiss each other? Those are all trees in there. Yes, they are. We're going to not put any heavy traffic around them, right? That's correct. There was a. Uh one of the sections showed where you're going to be putting all the material. This shows on this plane where the material is going. On the front, uh, on the first page. It's on on sheet five. Yes, it is. Yes. Now, like you said, it's like two to three feet. It'll actually blend in. Once you get uh, to the back of this pile, it actually starts going up steeper. So this will blend in right. and you know make a nice transition to the flatter area of the meadow. Jim. Jim? Yeah, I saw it on the color. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a tree protection detail on this one page for the remaining trees that are going to save? And then we show tree protection around some of the trees in the stream restoration area. We should have a, a detail on there. If not, we can certainly provide that. Uh, sheet 9, we do show a tree protection detail. It's not showing where it's going though. No. Uh, let's see. Do you have it where it's going? We don't show any within the area of, of the pond dredging. I mean, if you want, we could place it around this mass of trees to ensure that. I'd just like to see it just so, you know, you're going to be trucking. I can see it's a straight shot. It's pretty simple from the, the middle pond, just the far pond, how to truck it up but stay away from that grouping of trees. Uh, on, on the way up, do you know what I mean? Yeah, we can show it around around that mass and this upper one as well. And you have the new detail from our new ordinance on that tree protection, right? The six foot fence? I'm sure my office does. We can add the appropriate one. Okay. The, the little uh, orange line show, that's where you're basically doing most of your dredging, right? The orange? The uh, it's the actually orange throughout, throughout the pond. The, okay. Those are probably uh, larger depositions where it's actually mounted up higher. Well, in the pond, the dredging from the east side. Where, where's the route to go? I mean, to to go from that pond on the east side, uh, you basically have to go through the trees to get to that excess material leveling area, don't you? From this side, the east no. side. That pond. Here, right, right here, right by that yeah. yellow line, right there. there. The yellow Where, where's line. The, where's the stuff dredged out of there going? How's it getting up same, there? Same, same place. That's going to go right through the trees, though. So that's what we said. We can corridor off that area. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually, the tree protection fencing shows in relation to the actual trees, not just like a, well, a sample, but just how it's actually working in that that landscape. And we can see the, this aerial shows you the outlines of the tree drip lines. Right. So there's you know. Looks so like even greater than 20 feet within there for them to go in between those trees. So, Jim, between those two trees, looks like what's the scale here? This is a 40 scale. It's almost 40, 30 feet, I would say, 40 feet. between the drip lines of those trees. I think they would have enough room, Jack. They have an 8 inch yeah. maple and a yeah. 13 inch dash at the top, so. Right. I but would the, just tree, the, the, the fence protection would be crucial. Yeah, particularly. Because, you know, the truck drivers, if they don't see that, they, sure. they don't know. Yeah. And if they could just make that, uh, if it would be more cost effective to make that one, just one general loop of tree protection around that whole grouping of trees. Yes. To ensure that nobody kind of cuts through there. Do you know what I mean? Not, that's how we, yes. 
That's may, fine. Maybe more beneficial than just making little circles around everything. And then you have the tree protection around the 24 inch wall, right? Correct. And you'd have to have separate one there. And then the, the maple, the 24 inch maple going up through those line of trees, just have one general, just one big protection there, right? We're already jacking the uh, Starting at right at the, uh, right just north of the pond, the 24 inch willow. Yeah, I got it. And then that whole line of trees up there, just one big yeah, tree protection around there. Correct. So the only one that we need its own would be that 24 inch wall. By itself. Right? So. Question. Um, if you're using a bucket truck or something like that, how big is that going to be and where are you going to locate that? You know, we're going to place the the you know the base of the crane, so to speak. Uh, that will be located close to the edge of the pond. They'll work. They'll retrieve the material, deposit it in the truck, and then the truck will head up. And on the other one, the same. Yes. I assume that's going to be far enough away from those other trees, right? It's not located right in the when they're when they're driving here. Well, when they're, they're splitting there, they're just going to be sitting there, pumping stuff up. This isn't going to fade if they have it. Wait, if they have the hoe here, mm -hmm. digging, and they have Excuse me, did, did, the, uh, did the homeowners, have they picked a contractor yet? Uh, they're in the process of finalizing that contract. About these so right, may I ask who? Uh, they're, they're looking they at a couple of vendors, Dawson uh, out of New Jersey and EQR out of Maryland. Uh, maybe I can help the commission a little bit. The folks that specialize in this kind of work, uh, like Toth wet excavating and the companies you mentioned there, so you picture a, a Traco, a hydraulic excavator with a very long arm. And that's, that's the usual method. So it's not something that's limited to, you know, 15 feet of reach. They use machines designed to reach out very far, bring that in. So it gives them a little bit of maneuverability. If there's a group of trees where the commission sits, the machine can usually sit off that, mm -hmm. still excavate what it has to, and then move around. But they're, it's specialized equipment for this type of uh, work, if that helps you. And it's also, just due to the very nature of the equipment, it's low ground pressure. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. In agreement? Yeah. With yes, the sir. tree protection? Yes. We're just going to add. Just add, tree Just add tree protection and it Ready should be go. fine. Great. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Chairman, we'll, we'll make the changes. They don't need to come back to the Shade Tree Commission and we'll make sure engineering gets these comments. Right. With Thank the, you, sir. Make the note about our, or the, make sure it, to, to our new ordinance with the, with the chain link uh, tree protection. Okay, we have, next up is uh, 401 Oak Lane Residential Addition Driveway. Remove portion of building, walks, and driveway. Move 85 cubic yards of dirt taken off site. Hi, good evening. I'm uh, Brett Thibodeau. I'm the uh, homeowner along with my wife of the property. Um, so we're adding uh, we're adding an addition, uh, a garage addition and driveway to uh, the existing structure, and then uh, we'll be removing um, an existing garage and driveway uh, from the other side right now, and uh, have two trees. I think that we have uh, planned to take out a 20-inch fir tree. 10 inch holly tree that's next to the house. And when I looked at this, there's, isn't there also a, an 8 inch cherry tree down here at the end, right at the end of the driveway? Yeah. And so. Right about where your finger is, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, there is. In the, the 10 inch holly. In where we'll do the, uh, no, um, here. The 10 inch holly's here. There's an eight-inch cherry here in the in the um, 
right near the curb or whatever it is in the sidewalk. Near the sidewalk. See what I'm talking about? So you have a you have an eight inch cherry, two twenty inch pines, and one ten inch holly. So the total is four trees altogether. Um, not that we're planning to take down. Those are the ones that are near the property. I don't think we're planning to take all four down. Yeah, Max is in. One, two, three. It just says on a tree removal schedule. It says one eight inch cherry. And That's two nice. twenty inch pines. Okay, so yeah, so I guess he's planning to take them both down. So that would be the two firs, the eight inch and then the ten inch holly. So we're adding the ten inch isn't on your removal schedule, so we have to add one ten inch holly. So the total is four. Four. Removals. And the one is a, a street tree, a town tree? Yes. Okay. So that's gonna be replaced? Yes. Okay. Is that on the plan being replaced or? Uh, I don't know that we have it on the plan being replaced. I don't know that we have it on the plan being replaced. Well, maybe you, just, you could make a note that you were going to be replacing another flowering tree sure. to replace the street tree that you will be removing. Sure. If there's room on your property, we'd like to see you plant a canopy tree a, a tree that would become a large shade tree along the street rather than a cherry tree which would be short-lived so if you feel you have that uh, opportunity sure. on your property we'd like to recommend that to all that come in front of us for the future of the canopy of the township sure so, sure yeah no we, we, we appreciate that in fact we, we kind of want to do that on the other side anyway um, but we'll we had planned to we had planned to do something on this side when we landscape it, so. Okay, that, so that'd be great if you could, if you could put a, a canopy tree back in sure. for, that replay, for that cherry tree coming out yeah. on the street. No problem. Okay. So just uh, on the plan, we have a four total removal. The addition is a 10 inch holly and the replacement of a canopy tree along, uh, would that be going in along Beach Tree or Oak Lane? Uh, we can, you know, the reality is we're probably going to do two. We're probably going to do or at least two. We're probably going to do one along Beach Tree, which will be further up here. Okay. Uh, and then there was one that had come down a number of years ago that we're probably going to do over here, but we wanted to do the landscaping sort of all inclusively when we do it. So, so you have some room. Uh, so there will, yeah, so there, there's room. Okay. There's plenty of room to do it. That's all the trees that are on the property. You have a 12-inch ash kind of toward the corner and uh, just the trees behind the garage then um, with the tree protection around them. Yeah, the, those shouldn't be impacted. There shouldn't be anything impacted other than those. Just to the, uh, if this is uh, north-south, on, on your existing existing driveway um, be south of that it says 30 inch and then it says silk fence is there another tree in that area there or you know just showing some tree protection yeah oh, they're going to demolish the garage yeah, yeah that's right here no right here oh so you know i'll, I'll tell you this i think he was actually showing it for this fur because I don't know that we sort of froze. Oh, the possibility of that was going to that was not going to come down. Yeah, we weren't. We weren't. My, my wife actually wants to keep that, so we weren't uh, completely, I think, sold on taking that fur out because <clears throat> it actually would provide a little bit of it, it sort of on a southern uh, southern piece of the addition, so it would it would sort of provide a little shade. She thinks, I guess, in that area of the lawn. But um, so I, I think that that's what he was showing. We don't. There are no other trees over here. Um, so I think that's probably what he was showing. You have a, is that a, a 20 inch cherry that's between the proposed uh, garage addition and the pool there? Yes, here. Yeah. Yes. Now, this is uh, pretty close to the new garage, huh? 
It is. Is it in pretty good shape, the cherry tree, or is that something? Uh, it, it's, it's in decent shape, yeah. I mean, it, it, it flowers nicely, and my wife likes it, so she wants to keep it because it, it provides a sort of a nice, uh, well, nice I'm not frame. picking up where that one is. Um, right just here. bottom right hand corner of the oh, pool. Oh, okay, right got it. Pool. Yeah. yeah, it's a little hard to see. Yeah, I see it. Um, just as proposed on the plane here, you have your tree protection. It's going to kind of just parallel to your proposed uh, garage, the foundation for your garage. This church is going to be very close. It's going to be pretty impacted by the footer, digging the footer of your new garage here. Um, you just have to be a little bit careful. If it's a tree that you do intend to save, uh, you may want to make a note with your arborist to uh, be concerned as they dig because you're going to encounter uh, quite a bit of roots of that cherry tree yeah. um, as they dig the footer for your garage. Um, and it may be uh, to the point of undermining the tree that it may be impacted pretty significantly by that digging there. Yeah, it, it, that's one that we uh, understand. Understand the issue, and, and we're going to try to be sensitive to it because we we want to keep that tree to the extent that we can. Um, you know, it's a it's a slab garage that's going there, so we know that the footers, you know, there'll be footer support. But um, yeah. we're hoping that we don't have to do any more damage than necessary to it. Well, just uh, <clears throat> just ask your contractor to to be as careful as they can if they, if they do encounter some roots just to cut and clean it if it is a tree you want to save because it could um adversely affect it if it uh if they get into that root sure. system with the excavator right okay yep. now, do they have to put replacement trees in well they're only at four so they don't there's no heritage trees on here thank you and if the cherry were come down then they'd be at five so they'd still be under if they agreed to put in a couple more trees anyway. Right, he's yeah, putting, I mean, he's putting trees anyway. We want to put in trees. Uh, that would be much appreciated. Sidewalk trees. Yeah, giving us a yeah, canopy. Sure. Looks like you guys love trees. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we got a couple of hear a lot of concern from you about Yeah, I mean, trying it's, to it's, uh, and we're going to landscape with probably additional trees on the property once we get going. So I just, okay. I don't know exactly where, but right. yeah, my wife very much wants to do that, so. Okay, so we're all in agreement here? Yep. Agreement on what? We're in agreement uh, that he can go ahead with his proposed garage plan, uh, removal of four trees, and he is going to be replacing the street tree that he removes with an additional canopy tree along Beach Tree. Right. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Could you repeat that? I didn't quite get that. The last um, step. The, the tree removal schedule changed. It, there's a total of four trees with the addition of one 10 inch holly. And the applicant has agreed to replace the four inch tree, street tree with one uh, canopy tree uh, along Beach Tree Road, Beach Tree Lane. Okay, so we're giving, uh, the, the commission's given approval with conditions. We just ask that you note those changes on the plans and just resubmit them back to engineering. Okay. That way, it's always known what was changed, and when our inspector goes out, we, everybody knows what's going on. Okay. And John's part is well aware of how to do this. Not a big deal. Yeah, sure. So the the one that's that's added that he doesn't have is the ten inch holly, and and then we put it on the canopy. Those are the two things that I need to have him show. Am I saying that right? Correct. Okay. No problem. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is is Mrs. Walker still to live across the street from you? Sorry. Across the street from you is Mrs. Walker, right? Yeah, Anita Walker. She is. Yeah, she's. Uh, so she's to um, to do west of us. Yeah. She's been there a long time. Yes, yeah, she has. She's been I went to high school with her daughter. She's been there a long time, and then uh, yeah, she's she's had her issues, but she's she's doing all right. So she's a, she's a tough lady. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Final for tonight is uh, four hay market. Uh, 955 cubic yards of dirt kept on site. Good evening. Hi, my name is Dan Clune. Um, 
uh, incoming owner and uh, uh, builder uh, of, of the property. Okay. So I, I had an, an arborist come out and, and verify a couple of details on the plan. Okay. Um, and he wrote me a letter, which I have some copies if I can give them to you guys or sure. Just pass them out. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. So I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with uh, Mr. Thompson, um, uh, but he came highly recommended to me, and I was trying to preserve the, uh, we're, we're removing a few heritage trees, all but one are dead on the property, um, and I was trying to preserve that tree. Um, and if uh, the, the tree I'm, I'm speaking of, I guess I should use this pointer, um, is this tree here. Uh, on the plan, they were noted as walnut trees. Uh, Mr. Thompson said there are no walnut trees here. All, there, all the walnuts are actually ash trees. And this 48-inch ash tree I was uh, trying to preserve. And in his opinion, the impact, it's a very mature tree. And uh, the impact of the groundwater now moving to the left and right of that tree, um, in his opinion, was going to kill the tree um, in the next few years. Uh, I asked him if there was anything else we could do for the tree um, in order to try to preserve it, um, and he didn't recommend that. He also um, added some sort of ash bore or something that, um, in his opinion, is going to be here very quickly, and if we were able to somehow preserve it, we'd probably lose it anyway. Um, so. That's why I left it as uh, to be removed on the plan. The other ones um, along the back line here, um, in the letter, he, he shows that these are actually, there, there's two that aren't marked dead, but he said these two um, are dead trees. And there's an additional one uh, that I've marked on this plan up here that's, that's dead and should come down because it sits above within reach of two different structures then. So we're going to go ahead and, and remove this dead tree as well. Um, but that wasn't shown to be removed. I just I marked it here on this plan. Uh, yes, sir. That's correct. Yes. I've got pictures of them as well. Um, if that would be helpful. That is dead. Okay. What is our tree count? Coming, coming down. Is it listed here? Or? I counted 19 uh, when I included the values of, uh, of the heritage tree, and there's a couple other, there's one other. Um, 20 inch, is it? A 20 inch ash tree right over here. Okay. When I added up the values of those, uh, I counted uh, 19, a value of 19 total. Oh, I'm sorry. Correct. This was an approved plan back from 2008. So when the new plans were resubmitted, the old formula was left on the plans. We could certainly add the new formula to the plans. All right. Did you discount the dead trees out of your total? No, we did not. <clears throat> I had the arborist come after the, uh, the plans were reviewed because I was trying to just come up with a solution for that tree. Um, so that just happened a couple of days ago. Okay. Um, all right. So we need to uh, we need to tighten up our uh, our replacement schedule and our formula. We need to remark the trees on the plan.
correctly according to genus and species so we know what's what and we're going to add that other 40 inch oak onto it on the uh, on the south side that the dead one right that's not, that doesn't have an X on, on our plan correct this one here yeah Uh, yes, that's what Mr. Thompson, uh, it, it appears dead, but I, I have no idea, so I had him confirm that. Um, well, there's a, couple, there's a couple different, there's a couple things we need to talk about. Um, as the proposed plan here in front of us, um, I have some issues with the, on the eastern property line, the, there's a 38 inch, I guess it's marked as a walnut, but maybe it's not. It's directly on top of the property line. Yes. Do you own the property next door to? Um, not, no, not yet. Okay. <clears throat> um, you're just going to be, you, this, is a, this is a very tight building envelope to have egress to what you want to do in the back as far as sequencing with this. I, I'm imagining, is this double black line a proposed retaining wall here You're along your 310, 308 line? Yes. <clears throat> um, so that tree is going to be impacted due to the fact of your construction activity along that side of the property. You're going to be into the root zone of that tree pretty significantly, um, and you also have some grade line changes coming into its root system when you do your final grading, when you're stepping down 304, 302, 300, all the way down to 294, heading uh, kind of north to south there, down the slope. Um, so if it is your tree, because you own both properties, um, it's going to be impacted. You're going to be compacting the root zone with the equipment and physically, just with your envelope being as tight as it is. Uh, from appearances, you have approximately 10 foot on either side of the property line from that envelope. Can you double check that? Yeah. You're 120. It looks like it's you know, 10 to 15 feet or so. So if you figure with over dig on that uh, foundation, getting the equipment through, you basically are going to be driving right along the trunk of that 38 inch tray, whatever it is, to be able to pour the concrete and build a wall unless, and build a patio, whatever you need to do, unless you want to come to the other side, which is very tight too, toward your neighbor on the west. Which 38 is this one? That's right here. Mr. Madsen, just, so this was an existing application. Yes. This was originally uh, applied for in, you said 2008? 2008, 2008, yes. Okay, and you're, you're resubmitting for grading and, and all that at this point? Right, what happened is we submitted the grading permit in 2008. with the conditional of approval from 2008. The permit was issued, but the project was never built. So no, nothing on the project has been changed. It was never built. We're just simply resubmitting the same permit. Okay, but I mean, you're resubmitting a grading permit and all, all that. Right. You know, because it's past the five, the five years is the magic number on, on all these things. Yeah. Okay. So does that, that does, does that get grandfathered in under no. the old formula? He will. Five years is the limit on the permit, so now they will have to abide by the new shade tree requirements. Uh, stormwater ordinance hasn't changed at all since, since that time, uh, but basically still has to go through the process of a grading permit and you know, ultimately a building permit, but he does need to come through this commission. Um, I, I don't know if you folks, if the commission is familiar where this is. So when you There's go like down Clyde and you come in off of Haymarket, come into Haymarket, 
immediately on your left, there's what it's like a private driveway pull off. And there's only one house built there now, but this lot has been existing since uh, it's probably yeah 40 years. I was gonna say I was a kid when that went in. So uh, is that with the for sale sign back in the woods? Yeah, there's a couple of them. And there's, there's a big hole back in there too, isn't it? Is that this? That's, that's, that's a basin. retainage basin for right. all of that. Uh, uh, well, from, from that side of the slope. And where does this fall? It's, that's not this lot where the re, the retaining basin is. Where's no, the retaining the basin? Basin? basin is right here. Okay, so you're up even the, further. The start of the contours there. I got you. It's a pretty heavily wooded lot, as it is. Um, your compensatory trees are, are going to be very significant due to the amount of trees coming down here. So um, what I would like to see is uh, a revised plan come back to us with the correct genus and species of the trees presently, the corrections on your removal uh, tree list, discounting the dead trees. Uh, we have an arborist report indicating what trees are dead here. Mm -hmm. um, so they won't be counted on your compensatory tree planting. An overlay of your uh, proposed landscape plan, including all of your compensatory trees, where they're going to go on the new property. And if you can't fit them in, you know, what, what we propose to do after that. It's a tough um, area to plant compensatory trees. Uh, that's that's what I'm, that's what, what I'm heading toward. Is it, it's <clears throat> it's a very wooded lot. So you can, because you have some a number of heritage trees, your a number of compensatory canopy trees is going to be very high on this lot, and it may not fit. So that has to go back with discussion to Steve as far as what our options are as far as uh, you have your fee in lieu of fee in lieu of. And um, also, there's times we allow, if the Shake Tree Commission wants, if there's an area that we have the ability to, the builder could actually plant those trees in some of their area on township owned land or. Right. I have um, uh, some other, just, uh, we are trying to get to uh, imp improve some of the surrounding area here. I got a couple of pictures I'd like to show you um, of directly across. Um, the pictures I'm going to show. Um, if you're looking out the front of this property, this is the, the drives coming in. And then there's a section of land. Um, it is the association land between this little spur of Haymarket and Clyde Avenue. So that's what we're looking at here, which is being used as, uh, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. There's a pile of stone that's been there. For it's, it's an old dump, right? Time. Wasn't it somebody was dumping there? Or? Uh, they're, they're still dumping there. I ran somebody out of there the other day. <laughs> um, they, they think it's just lovely to dump all this stuff there. Um, here's the existing storm basin, and a lot of that's kind of as a consequence of everyone and their brother backing in there and, and dumping their chips and logs and everything else. Um, so I'd like to clean that up. Um, I, I talked to Rob. I'm sorry, his name's Roy. Uh, Roy Perry, I think, took over from Rich McClure there of the Homeowners Association. Um, and I asked him, they have a board meeting coming up um, February 4th, I believe, and I, I'm going I'm to go, and he said they'd be in support of, of, of doing something here. I think by the nature of cleaning this up and, and getting the, in the house in there, it's going to remove this as a dump site for everybody. But this particular photo here, I'm, I'm standing seven or eight feet off the ground. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. And um, I was talking to Greg Thompson, the arborist, of how we can maybe, you know, make a little planting berm that won't impact uh, the existing trees there, and then plant a bunch of mountain laurel, or he said something about some skip laurel, or he had some other ideas too on some evergreens going through there, which I think would be a, a big benefit. You can see there's some trees that are gonna crash onto Clyde Avenue here pretty shortly. Um, and that's not the only one. There's, there's seven or eight of them coming up through there that are leaning or broken. Um, so the plan was I'd, I'd like to clean all that out, um, make it really presentable. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Perry said he would be in support of maintaining that because it is association land. Uh, but it, I think I was you know, hoping that that can be part of this compensatory uh, uh, discussion because uh, it seems like everyone would benefit from that, including, including me. I mean, I, I would like to see that as a much you know, nicer looking area than it looks now. Um, so I don't know if that, that could be considered. Um, 
as a hardship that you cannot plant them on your proposed property. We just need to see uh, a landscape plan that would include them on this property with the homeowner association signing off it, that you are allowed to do that. Um, you do have to take into consideration that there's going to be a high number of canopy trees that are going to be needed. What I mean is not per se evergreens or skip laurels, but trees that want that are going to become oak trees. And in this case, being in the woods, it may be, I don't know it exactly, but you'd have to pick and choose the spots where those trees would be viable in yeah. that setting. So if it'll work uh, and the board would agree on it um, and we have permission from the powers that be, I don't see why that couldn't be a uh, option. I, I could, uh, the chairman, I think, hit it right on. We need to see something from, you know, the HOA. We need to see somewhat of a plan as for what you would do, because right. I think the commission's going to want to see. Right. We need we need plan. to see the same effect that you would have here, where these trees are going. That would be on that piece of property. Mm -hmm. So we would need that transferred onto that. Would the applicant be willing to, uh, as part of that whole cleanup? Um, grab some of those big logs that have been have fallen down into the basin over the years um, I would uh, take it to finish all of it thank um, you I also planned on you know this whole perimeter I mean this provides some nice shade from the blue route um, from Clyde Avenue there, there's a lot to be done here uh, it's not a, it's not a very inexpensive undertaking to clean all that out and, and to do that uh, but in my understanding right that skip laurel is is not going to be a um, a substitute for canopy trees. Correct. Mr. Thompson's opinion, I can't plant canopy trees anywhere in here because it's so dense. Uh, he said, you know, it's going to be a waste of the, the trees. Well, maybe uh, in lieu of the tree, maybe you could come up with a ca uh, pricing on what it's going to take to clean this area up, removing the logs, brushing debris, uh, letting us see that cost, uh, costing of what you're going to be out of pocket and then uh, what would go back in as a buffer being evergreen trees or shrubs and we could make a decision uh, as a hardship uh, in that respect if uh, if that would work if that would satisfy us Steve if uh, if we could see some costing on that project I, I think that's great uh, Mr. Chair because what we have to do is an opportunity here to uh, have addressed an area that's right. that's been somewhat of an eyesore and that also needs some attention exactly and this may be a great trade-off to get that uh, get that basin in better working condition right get the stone debris removed stop the dumping and yet still beautify it I, I think it's a great uh, possible partnership there on that I think if that could work out for us we would be we, we would be in agreement to have that area cleaned up with plant material that would be suitable and uh, deer resistant can take the uh, terrain and the light condition with your uh, proposal of uh, clearing out the area to uh, make it better for the neighborhood. Okay. Can Just I ask a question though, Steve? Isn't that really that area the homeowner's responsibility, not ours? Not a township responsibility? No. It is uh, It is HOA responsibility. So it's their property. We're cleaning uh, up their property. The applicant sure would be. I mean, and and I think everything here ties together. So obviously, the applicant, from a marketing standpoint, doesn't want to take people down to look at the house with this stuff there. No, I get it. Um, I'm d and, but it and I mean, I, I see what you're saying. It is HOA property, but uh, if you go through Haymarket, I mean, and especially this area, it is pretty dense. There's a little stand of trees that takes you between this little pull off and Clyde Road. Mm -hmm. That there is a lot of. Um, uh, Material that probably should come out, and nothing that we would normally say go in and make a, an HOA do. You okay. know, uh, we wouldn't Im impose that on them as we would any uh, open space in, in most cases. So I, I think what the commissioner, uh, the chair, is saying, which I think is great, is let's look at the let's look at the revised planting list and what the fee in lieu of would be, and let's look at what that work would be, and it would be up to this commission if they wish to do so. And I, I think I need to check our uh, sheet tree commission uh, ordinance to make sure that you even have the power to do this right. in, in this way but if it could cost out in lieu of your hardship is you can't plant these canopy trees on your said property here as proposed so in lieu of that what would the cost be if you had to plant them in the township 
or give that to the parks, what is the cost going to be if you clean this area up and uh, do, as you said, with some planting that would enhance it for uh, the neighbors and the community there? Jim, right. just one little suggestion. I give your advice on this, but now where they're saying they're, look, they're going to lose these trees anyway. See that bit leaning tree there? Right. Usually, if you take if you take out if you take that tree out now. Couldn't you put a, a canopy there where that spot is? When the, when you can, depending on what the that right. that uh, what they I mean. It's hard to see that what's above. Yeah, there. it might be Norway maple or something that's just choking that whole area off. Let's we'll see this. Let me see if I can pull this down and you can get a little better shot. But it, if his plan and take yeah. involves removing some like a normal, right. are you thinking about removing like say you know Norway maples are not a, it's a weed tree basically. It's a big tree, but. Right. We I mean, don't, we don't. If you are were to go in there and say yeah. we have several hazard trees that have to come out, we also have two or three Norway maples that could come out to give us a pocket of light to put in a canopy tree. With that, that be, with that mindset, also, you may be able to replace some of the cull out some of these awkward trees here and replace them with some right. heritage, some decent trees that could become heritage trees. Because uh, he said know. there's not enough light, but that's based on right. those trees staying there. If those trees are going to go anyway, I th I think that'll it, I th create a pocket I think of light. Just to have, trees? Yeah. yeah. I think it's just a general arborist overview of that wooded area mm -hmm. with the idea, perhaps, of being able to replace a few canopy trees in that spot. What did you refer to these trees other than... I'm not, you the them? Norway maples? Yeah, there's some sort of... They're, um, uh, the Norway it, maples are, are they're, they're, just basically a weed tree. Right, I mean, tree. They're not they're not considered a, a positive maple like you know the uh, sugar maples or the red maples or they're, they're on the invasive list. They're invasive. They're basically an invasive plant, and they're all over the place. And they'll take over an area too. So nothing else can grow there. They'll put up new seedlings. Seedlings will grow right up in the shade, won't they? Yeah, they'll just flourish. Yeah, they'll right go there. right right. They're one of the few grow right in the shade and just take over a whole area. So if you wanted to get take out some of the Norway maples or the trees that are in bad shape there, then you could put heritage trees in there, make it a beautiful replacement. Do you, when you, uh, this, this property crosses the street, are you planning to take, like for example, in, in the upper right picture of the photograph here, are you planning to take all of those down? That wasn't the plan. I'm, I'm going to look at it with Mr. Thompson, but okay. this, like this tree here, yeah. Uh, there are several of them as you go up toward the entrance off of Clyde. Right. That they're leaning in various directions. The initial thought was to clear out anything that was, I guess, a hazard, a hazard tree, right. and then to work in uh, planting berms through there, not impacting the existing trees. Right. Uh, but you, but if for example, these other ones can be removed and replaced with nicer ones. I'll have them look at that too, as a possible alternative. Yeah. Okay. Bizarre question as this is. If he takes some of those trees out, does he have to put account for replacing those well, trees? If they're hazard trees, then it's no. Then it's no. If we start going in and taking out trees, you know, if we go into this lot and start taking out five trees over six inch diameter, yeah, we don't want to go there. We don't want to get into submitting a clearing permit where you're going to have to have compensatory plea trees replaced for these trees you're taking out. We want to find a, a line between, I would stick more with the hazard trees that have to come out, okay, in this case, and coming back to us with uh, what you would propose from then, from there, okay? Okay. All right, Jack, Doug, we're in agreement here. I concur with that. Er everyone, very good? Yeah. Okay, and uh, that concludes our uh, or shade tree, you're going to have to come back with uh, that revised plan to us uh, for next month. All right. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks.